Good morning, everyone. Let me... That should fix the sound a little better. Okay. It kind of looks like it's going to rain, but it may or may not. We've had some bad weather in northern Georgia up on the Tennessee border, but it hasn't gotten down this far. It's sprinkled off and on, but yeah, it's kind of that in-between weather. Let's see if I can fix that. I was thinking, uh, I'm, I think I'm done with the project that I've been working on. They haven't said they want me back, so I might darken my hair. I did it for many years. Uh, this was just, I wanted to see what it looked like. It will help me if I get my hair a little darker to fit in with a little bit younger crowd. Um, I'm not going to ever be 35 again. I'm not trying to be, you know, for the acting stuff. But if I could maybe do 55, 60, something like that. Um, so if I get rid of the darker hair, I'd have to deal with, you know, facial hair as well. And then I'm deciding whether I want to grow my beard back. We'll have to wait and see. All right. Uh, I'm working on still trying to decide whether I need to get a trailer, uh, like a pop-up trailer. My car can pull, I think it said, 2,000 pounds. So that's putting me in the range of a very small trailer or a pop-up. Um, I had one subscriber brother offer his, but he's a long ways away, so I don't know if I can get it here or not. Um, just keep praying for it. We'll see what's going to happen. It will change the dynamics a little bit, but even a pop-up trailer has soft sides. It's not a solid uh, sheet metal type all the way as a top and a bottom and then the sides are soft because they have to go up and down accordion style. Anyhow, uh, still trying to pray for that and see what comes up. We're going to continue on reading through Revelation. We're going to move uh, past the seals, which should have ended in chapter 7, but they didn't mark the chapters right, so they went on into chapter 8. So we're going to continue in chapter 8, and we're going to read about the trumpets. Now, the trumpets are pretty violent. There's some bad stuff that happens in the seals. A quarter of mankind dies, and probably from some kind of a disease. But now it gets really violent, and it's like, where are we at? Um, I'm going to wait and read Matthew 2nd. We've already covered this part, but we know about the sun turning dark, the stars falling from the skies. That's kind of after things are happening. So it looks like the trumpets might be after the midway point. They may start a little bit in the beginning, but it's there's too much damage happening. And if the Antichrist is going to come in and build the temple and do all that stuff, he needs to be able to solve the war problem and not be dealing with the world that's erupting. So... Trumpets still overlap seals because seals go all the way to the end. Now, there may be some of this, you know, just have to wait and see. We won't be down here, people. We have a rapture. So, turn with me to Revelation 8, 6. It should be Revelation 8, 1, but they marked it wrong. The original Bible didn't have chapters and verses. Most people couldn't read and write. And the people that could read and write knew this stuff pretty well and just needed enough of a, a guide to help them remember. So it wasn't until later on. And really there was no mass distribution of it until the Gutenberg printing press. So, Revelation 8.6 and the seven angels that had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Now, we're looking for trumpet sounding. 
but not these ones. We don't want these. And the first sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up. The third part of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. That is not going to be something that we see until the end. We know the whole heavens and the earth are, are burned up. This isn't it yet. This is still, come on people, wake up, accept God, stop fighting against God. Do you realize who you're fighting against? No, we're going to do what we want to do and no one's going to tell us. It's like, uh, I don't know if God has hair, but he at this point in time must be pulling it out. And the second angel sounded it, as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. We had a quarter of the population die in the seals. Now we're dealing with the trumpets. Assumedly, we're already past the time of the abomination, desolation, and the wrath of God. So some of this could kind of be mingled with that. Um, what I don't understand on the timing-wise of this, when we get further down, is the pit is opened. I was taught earlier on that the pit was opened early. But as we study this, I'm finding out that it doesn't seem to match. Okay. We're continuing on. Verse 9. And there died the third part of the creatures which were in the sea, even they that had life, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. This is pretty violent. This is not stuff near the beginning. This is last-ditch effort. 10. And the third angel sounded... And there fell from heaven a great star, burning as a torch, and it fell upon a third of the rivers and upon the fountains of the waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. I'm sure you've heard that. There is some kind of a asteroid supposedly going to hit the earth in 2030, 2040, something like that. It's out in the future, but this is out in the future. So it could be it. But it could be one that we don't know about. Astronomers have said many times, we don't know but 1% of what's out there floating around. And if it comes from the sun, in the direction of the sun, you can't look at it and see that it's there until the last second. So, there's a lot of stuff coming down, people. And this is only happening because people refuse to accept God. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Now, I don't know what you put in water to make it deadly other than arsenic, but there could be plenty of other chemicals in there. Um, and the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, that the third part of them should be darkened, and the day should not shine for a third part of it and the night in the like manner. This isn't the final destruction, but it's got to be real close. And I saw and I heard an eagle flying in the mid-heavens, saying with a great voice, Woe, woe, woe to them that dwell on the earth. By reason of the other voices, the trumpet of the three angels, who are yet to sound, they're not done yet. And this is pretty big stuff. That was chapter 8. Now we're at chapter 9 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from heaven fall into the earth, and there was given to him a key to the pit of the abyss. Now, angels typically are described as falling stars a lot of times. So this is an angel coming to earth. He's got a key. K 
he given to him for the pit of the abyss. This is where the bad angels are kept. They are so bad that God didn't feel that it was right to even have them loose on the earth. He lets Lucifer run back and forth. But these are some of his bad guys. Now, we don't know what they did in the past, but they are so bad. How bad are they? <laughs> they are so bad that they were locked in a bottomless pit. And he opened the pit of the abyss, and there went up smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun of the air were darkened by reason of the smoke from the pit. We've seen volcanic activities darken the skies. We have the Matthew part where the sun and the moon will be darkened. Is this lining up with that? Good possibility. And out of the smoke came forth locusts upon the earth. And power was given them as power of scorpions of the earth have power. Scorpions have a stinging tail. They can be very painful, if not deadly. Most people that get bit by scorpions don't die. But they are the most powerful pain. You know, you get bit, you get stung by a bee. Ouch, it hurts. You get stung by a scorpion, it's like, ah! They hurt. That's why, because I grew up in some desert climates, when I get up and put my shoes on, I always shake my shoes. Because scorpions like to crawl into shoes. There's no scorpions here, but I do it out of habit. Because I don't want to stick my foot in a shoe that has a scorpion in it. It will eventually sting. Four, and it was said unto them, that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Now, everything's already been messed with. So now these people, these scorpions, whatever they are, whether they're real angel creature type things or whether these are military helicopters because they're flying around, we don't know. This is figurative. The bottom line is, is they hurt. And it said to them, they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree but only such men's that have not the seal of God on their foreheads. That means there will be men with seals of God on their foreheads at this time on earth. This is towards the middle to the end of the 70th week. Jesus hasn't come back yet. This is the last, come on people, and there are Christians down here, but these creatures won't harm them. And it was given them that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And their torment was the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. And here's what it does, 9-6. And in those days men who seek death, death and shall in no ways find it. And they shall desire to die, and death fleeth from them. God won't let them die. You cannot escape the wrath of God. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared for war. So they had some kind of armor on them. And upon their heads were crowns like under gold. So, I mean, we look at some bright, shiny things on insects. Typically means they're dangerous. Plain ones that blend in, nothing ever bothers them, so they don't need it. And their faces were as men's faces. So we're getting a, a, a rough image. We're not really sure what this is. And they had hair as the hair of women, longer hair probably, and their teeth were the teeth of lions. Big devouring teeth. Now, when I hear something like this, I immediately think of an Apache helicopter that's got the teeth painted on the side. Could that be what this is? We don't know. We don't know. These could be real creatures, or these could be man-made. The seals and the trumpets are man's doing. 
and they had breast 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 plates, as it were, breast plates of iron, and the sound of their wings. I need to take a drink after that one. My mouth is sticking together. Breastplates. Okay, there I can say it. They had breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses rushing to war. Again, sounds like a helicopter. And they have tails like unto scorpions. Helicopter tails tip up. Some people have interpreted it this way. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying that we don't know. Interesting to imagine. But that would mean that there's still fighting going on. And there was fighting going on with the seals. And there's fighting going on here. Man never gives up on that. And they have the power to hurt men for five months. They have over them as a king the angel of the abyss. The big bad guy. You know, you're watching a movie or something and I... I like to watch you know, scary movies sometimes. It's like riding a roller coaster. You get the feel of it, but you don't get the damage from it, okay? So I will watch it, and there will inevitably be, if you're dealing with something, whatever it is, zombies, other people, whatever, you know, you watch the Raiders of the Last Lost Ark, the guy comes out, the German with the flying wing, He's the big guy that he's going to be fighting. And there's no way he's going to... There's no way Harrison Ford's going to beat him. So the plane takes him out eventually, if you remember that scene. But there's always a big guy. Well, here's the big guy on the scene. His name in Hebrew is Abandon. And in Greek, Apollyon. So if you've heard of either of those terms, that's what we're talking about here. And in 12, verse 12, it says, The first woe is past. Behold, there yet come two more woes. After all of this, this is just the first woe. There's going to be three. God doesn't want people to die and go to hell. People who say, why would God send people to hell? He's doing everything in his power to prevent it from happening. And the people are doing everything in their power to not accept God's free gift of life. Don't be sorry for the people. And there are Christians here, as we just saw. They have the seal on their head. Verse 13, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the horns of the golden altar, which was before God. One saying to the sixth angel that had the trumpet, Loose the four angels that are bound at the great river Euphrates. We're assuming that this is the modern-day Euphrates River. It's, there was a Euphrates in the Old Testament. We're not sure. I mean, there's a Miami Beach, North Carolina, you know, you can take a name and put it someplace, any place, because you liked it. You know, we have New England as a state because people liked Old England. So we're not sure 100% where the Garden of Eden was and what the rivers were, but in any case, there is a current river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose that had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year that they should kill a third part of man. These earlier trumpets, they just destroyed a third of the earth. Man is left. And the numbers of the armies of the horsemen was twice. 10,000 times 10,000. 10,000 times 10,000 is 100 million. Twice that, 200 million. A 200 million man army which leads to those things maybe being helicopters. Still war going on. They're still fighting. They won't give up. They won't accept God, or they have their own God that's not the true God. And they still think they can win. 
And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of hyacinth, and of brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths proceeds fire and smoke and brimstone. Again, I don't know what these are, but they could be describing modern military. A tank can fire out of its long snout, but it could be any kind of a vehicle. You can put a cruise missile on a jeep. Okay, so that's what that's going on in 18. By these three plagues was the third part of man killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which proceeded out of their mouths. So this sounds like a major war. This is not nice, people. For the power of the horses is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents and have heads, and with them they hurt. I don't know. He's trying to describe something 2,000 years ago. The only thing that they had back then were chariots and horses to pull them. How do you describe modern day military? You don't. You describe them in what you know. So this could be that. But they also could be angels. Satan's angels. They're still angels. Satan is still an angel. Lucifer. And the rest of mankind in 20, who were not killed with these plagues, repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and the idols of gold and of silver and of brass and of stone and wood. They wouldn't repent. After all this, they still wouldn't repent. Out of all those things that they were made of, which can neither see nor hear nor walk, they're idols. You want to make God mad, worship an idol. And they're doing that. And they won't accept God. 21, and they repented not of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Repented not. I'm sure some people will, because they're Christians, that we see during this time. Most people do not. They willingly choose to not go with God. They've been lied to, and some people are just plain evil people. They like that lifestyle. I am going to just briefly reread again Matthew 24, 29, so you can follow me there. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from the heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear a sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall the tribes of the earth mourn, and they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with the power and great glory. Is the stuff that we just read with the trumpets leading up to Christ's return? It's possible. And he shall send forth his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Still matching the trumpets of the trumpets. <laughs> with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds of the, from one end of heaven to the other. That's the final gathering, the final rapture, if you will. It's not going to be pleasant. That's why we're not going to be here. But people are going to be here. There will be Christians here. If you have a loved one that does not accept Christ, he will have time. And God will protect them. 
not completely, but, but they won't be killed. There has to be some punishment for not accepting Christ up to that point. But they will survive and eventually get to heaven. That's why you have to make sure you're planting seeds. You're telling people now so that when this stuff starts to happen, now there's going to be a, a time of peace. It'll be short-lived, but there will be a time of peace. And this is in the future, so they will have a chance to think about it. The Jews will become the focus again. They've always been in the back of focus, but in photography you can make a camera focus. You can, you can be on one person, it's called a rack focus, and you know where to put the focus for the second person, and you can go back and forth. Well, the focus is on the church right now, Christians specifically, because there's too many bad churches. But that's going to end shortly. And these are the things that are coming. When we come back to this, we will see how things progress. We're going to go back in time again. Each one of these vignettes is a time frame. Time frame. When it's done, that time frame is done. Then you go to the next piece, and it's going to cover a time frame. We still have to see the destruction of Babylon, the harlot, the Antichrist coming to power. All that stuff is in the first part. We're going to see it. We're going to see where they get to the price of things. Now, we've seen the seal cover because the seals cover the entire time frame where the cost of things will be too expensive and where there will be a plague. They start off with the white horse, the Antichrist. The trumpets seem to be near the middle to the end leading up to the coming of Christ. Next week we'll continue on. We're going to try to go through, we're going to try to finish the book of Revelation. Just for just for fun, because we won't be here. It's always good to see the bad guys get theirs. That's what's coming. Until we meet in the clouds, God bless.